So we've talked before about niches and, and the type of silos that you can be in as a BDO, but it's critically important to understand that if you specialize in one type of a deal, you need to talk to a shop that understands that deal, but more importantly, is willing to do it. Syracuse was in the news. Uh, Stunna Girl got in a big fight. Uh, there was a brawl, a melee at uh, her. Not hey, Stunna Alexa, play La Ross Cole. Yeah. Who's and she Stunna said, Girl? Hey, I have no idea. Still who Stunna Stunna Girl Stunna, uh, Stunna Girl. Oh, she the one who got her butt slapped on stage. Was that her? Yeah, she got her butt. She got her butt slapped on stage. And I hope this is the intro, open handed by a crowd. Uh, Get out. By, by a gentleman in the crowd. Her husband jumps off the stage gets into a tussle, security jumps in, and it's a melee. She still did say, shout out to Syracuse, we love y'all. I wonder where the show was, I'll have to Google it. It's probably someplace you've never been before. <laughs> it was at uh, Gentilly. No, I actually saw Emily in the crowd. <laughs> I... Square enough. Emily, you, you must confuse that with Morgan Wallen. Hey everyone, welcome back to the BDO Show, a podcast for passionate BDOs wanting to level up their game with advice and stories from battle-tested BDOs. I'm your co-host, Emily Detour, and I'm here with my fellow co-host, Chris Hackney, Alan Peterson, Sterling Birdsong, and Ryan Krogi. At the beginning of each episode, we're always going to remind you to hit like and subscribe and go ahead and send your topics and suggestions over to the BDO show at gmail.com. Since episode one, we have been talking about education, educating yourself on your shop, your deal, and your vendor relationships. We literally just talked about this on episode 11, that choosing the right partners to work with is a critical part of your success as a BDO. And since you know we don't gatekeep around here, let's talk about a fan favorite. The guys have had nothing but good things to say about peak business valuation. I also decided to do my own investigation, and what I learned was that the last year alone, Peak did 1,100 SBA business valuations and turned them around in just five business days. Most importantly, they're easy to work with. The Peak team is always happy to jump on a call to discuss a valuation. They not only explain how they arrived at the concluded value, but are also open to receiving any new information that potentially changes the concluded value. The staff is knowledgeable, fast, professional, and the communication is top notch. If you want to be the best, you have to work with the best. It's as simple as that. Reach out to Ryan at peakbusinessvaluation.com or call him at 435-359-2684. Let Peak Business Valuation help you build an SBA lending team that thrives. All right. So we haven't been together in a couple of weeks. And so we're going to start with a fun topic today, which is we are going to we are going to explore different kinds of shops. I'm immediately going to hand it to Alan because I know you'll probably have a lot to say because we've been everywhere. Sure. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate getting to reconnect with everybody uh, after our in-person, which is awesome. This topic of, you know, different kinds of shops, I think, is really important. Right. As we talk to BDOs in the industry, we all are able to do different things based ultimately on the appetite of our bank, non-bank, or you know, even credit union, SBA lending shop. This actually was kind of covered, some of that turmoil and confusion and all that shifting around, they covered really well on the SBA Today episode last week, where they were talking about some non-bank lender and fintech partners coming into the fold, which also addressed a perceived need in the market. You know, I think it's important for you to understand what kind of shop you're at, because they really are so different. There are things that other folks can do that you can't do. And it really comes down to the rule of two masters, right? You've got the SBA SOP. Those are the rules. That's it. That's the hard line. Those are non-negotiable. Then you have bank policy. And there's a lot of banks in my experience and feedback I get from my referral partners that at times, without malicious intent, misrepresent that the SBA says you have to or you can't do that because of, and when really it's bank policy. So you have to kind of keep an eye on it. Right now, I'm very fortunate to be at the internet where we're really relying upon SOP policy and kind of willing to do some rather creative things, but that's not everywhere. You know, we have friends that work at shops that are dedicated ex just to commercial real estate. Now they can get home on a commercial real estate deal if there's a building and a pulse and I can't, right? We're, 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 we're dependent on that pesky cash flow as a source of repayment. But there is other appetites and other banks out there. And I think it's important for you as a BDO to know where you fit in that fold, because it also helps you network effectively, being able to say, hey, I know that you guys don't really love this, but we're able to do that. And I know that we don't love this, but maybe there's an opportunity for, you know, other 
programs and banks and whatever. It just keeps you very, very sharp and just knowing what people are doing. And there's a real variety. I mean, what do you guys think? I think that um, the easiest way to break it down is that in my mind, there's there's banks where SBA, SBA is really a core revenue model for them. And they really structure their bank around SBA premium income and generating it. You know, it's, it's a huge part of their market approach and how they intend to be a profitable lending institution. And then there are banks where SBA is just a supplement to what they already provide. Um, you certainly see that with some of the much larger banks that you, you find on, on every corner. And what you end up with in those situations is a lot of the times the, the bigger producers are those banks where you know, they, they kind of have to eat what they kill. Um, they are dependent on the SBA uh, income in order for them to keep people employed, to pay salaries, uh, to keep the, the lights on there. Whereas uh, some of the other banks where maybe they are mostly a CRE lender or maybe they have a huge consumer loan portfolio or maybe they specialize in really doing auto loans, um, their revenue generation is from elsewhere. And so because of that, they treat the SBA product differently than banks who uh, need it to survive. So I think that knowing which type of bank that you're at is extremely important as a lender because you want to be in a position where a bank is dependent on your success for their success. That is what's going to uh, make life a lot easier for you because you know that you are rowing in the same direction as the bank that you're, you're working with. Uh, whereas if you're at one of those other banks where they can kind of take or leave SBA uh, generation, then you, you could find yourself in a position where those 50-50 calls you're going to lose. If something looks a little bit wonky with eligibility, you're going to lose. Maybe they don't even have a PLP license. So you're already kind of behind the eight ball and it can really make life difficult as a lender. Yeah, you kind of just touched on what I was going to ask next. Um, I'll ask Chris this. So like with so many lenders out there, what are some of the main differences that like new BDOs can look for in like either choosing a lender or working with a shop? Uh, obviously credit box, approval authority, who's got signing authority, who's got power of the pen up to what level that matters as well as far as mm -hmm. getting your deals done. Because committees are ju uh, Jurassic, isn't it, Chris? It's it's very antiquated, I must admit. But you know what? I like to be at a long table, and I like to just wax poetically about a deal that everyone's already read. Um, <laughs> hey, oh, no, nice. That sounds. I heard that Bars. one before somewhere. <laughs> shout out to my Bars. employer. But um, uh, also, you want to look at uh, support staff for your tribe, so to speak. We've covered that a couple of times too. Uh, are they overstaffed, understaffed? Obviously, the more staff, the better the ratios are. That means your deals ideally should go through quicker. If they are heavily staffed towards production, and I see this a lot in shops that grow rapidly, uh, you might have 15 to 20 lenders, loan officers, and you might have two closers, and you're like, whoa, they're doing everything. Their credit box is wide open. You get over there, and you're like, whoa. We got two people to close these loans and everyone's yelling at me because my loans can't close. That's a factor I think a lot of people overlook is what are the ratios between production staff and support staff too. You want to understand that uh, mix. And I think that is going to be critically important for your back room because if you're a high producer, you've got to make sure that the shop that you're working for, the shop that you're interviewing, because don't get it twisted. A shop may be interviewing you, but you are definitely interviewing them as well. Because if you're a high producing BDO, you need to understand that they have the back room that can have the capacity for your deals, right? That have the people that can take your deals and not only get them through the process, but do the type of deals that you do. So we've talked before about niches and, and the type of silos that you can be in as a BDO, but it's critically important to understand that if you specialize in one type of a deal, you need to talk to a shop that understands that deal, but more importantly is willing to do them, that they don't have a con credit concentration or, or any other type of policies that may prohibit you or handcuff you for getting a deal through their process. So a lot of BDOs out there, they want to look at the top. They, they look at the top 10 SBA lenders in the entire country, and they want to be with the pizzazz. They want to be with the top dogs, and they just uh, immediately gravitate towards them, right? 
well, they might not be the ones for you because there's a lot of BDOs that specialize in different types of products. Al mentioned earlier, there are some BDOs that do really, really well with real estate and they're willing to take their time, understand real estate and put together a structure that works for that. There are other BDOs like myself, like Al and some others that we work with that specialize in business acquisitions, partner buyouts, and we are more focused with cash flow. We're more focused with a borrower that can cash flow and actually repay us back before we look at everything else. And we're not so concerned about collect. So it's really important that if you want to understand a financial institution, whether it's a, a licensed SBA lender, whether it's an actual financial institution or whether it's a fintech, what is going to fit the type of deals that you do and do they have the capacity? The last thing you need to worry about is more, I mean, it's important because we've talked about compensation out here, but if they can do your deals and you can pump your, and they can pump your deals out, then you will make money through, through uh, putting more volume through. All right. So you don't have to worry about all the antiquated uh, uh, credit policies that they have that's going to stop your deal from getting done because you already know that it's going to get done. Now, if you just want to get, if you're at the end of your BDO world, if you're ready to retire, if all you want is a comfortable salary and good benefits, then, then go to one of those banks and retire. All right. But if you want to get good compensation, if you want to get good compensation, if you want to really you won't do get it. out, you there. won't do it. You won't I'm not going to do it. Hey, I'm not at you that age, man. Do don't don't do it. I'm, I'm still I'm still <laughs> pumping <laughs> deals out. You know, I'm still I'm still a high producer. But those of you, no, BDOs, not do I mean, uh, name the name. Oh, I'm not going to name, name the name. name no, I'm not there, man. I'm wearing my cowboy <laughs> hat. All right, I'm trying to I get more views. Rap beef, <laughs> SBA beef episode. Well, we don't have any. We don't have any beef. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Who who who's whose name did I cross? I don't, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. No. I'm just talking about there are banks out there that BDOs like to retire at, all right? They get a nice, comfortable salary, good benefits. They produce or not produce, you know, who cares? But that's not the type of shop for me. So the power rankings, I think, are important when it comes to volume, but you really need to look at those power rankings. Because if you look at the top five, let's take the top five, for example, and I'm not going to name any names, but some of the top five, I prefer volume. All right. I look at volume. What dollar volume are they putting out there? Because those are the real shops that have the capacity to get a deal done. If you're just looking at number right. of loans, then you're talking about a shop that's treating the express loan as a credit card portfolio. Right. They're just pumping through as many loans as they can get done. Right. I'm not impressed with that. I'm not trying to be down with the easy, bank like that. All right? I'm just trying to relax. <laughs> I, small loans matter. I prefer <laughs> <out> both loans. <laughs> no ditty. Matters. Small loans Size matter. No matters, ditty. Right? I'm just trying to be with a bank that will do my loans, that will have the capacity to to get all everything that I need done through a process, without all the antiquated. Oh, we need to have this amount of loans. We need to have that amount of loans. We need to follow this policy, that policy. I understand policy is important. Don't let the smooth taste fool you, and don't get me twisted. I just need to know that it follows SOP, you have the capacity, you have the underwriters, and you have the policies in place to be able to get my deals done. I was just going to share a personal aside that, you know, before I wound up where I'm currently at, I was talking to a few different banks and, you know, I clicked with one group pretty well, just from a personality standpoint, right? I was hearing everything I wanted to hear. It sounded like a great opportunity. I didn't really have any close, you know, connections that were actively working there. But the issue I had was I was kind of being told a lot of things. And when I looked at it as a bank, they did $6 million more than I had done as an individual the prior year, <laughs> you know, and, and with it, and when you know that they've got a team of eight folks, it, to me, that was really alarming and it caused me to take a step back. I think that, you know, there's some great opportunity to get with a shop who is growing, right? I don't think that top 10 is end all or be all. I think quite frankly, some of the coolest opportunities are out there for banks that are looking to revamp SBA or they're looking to kind of take a new approach to it, you know? But those are the kind of things you have to look out for because at the end of the day, with an average loan size of X, that should honestly, it should tell a little bit of a story of what their appetite really is and what deals are really getting approved. It's a great point, Al. I, I love financial institutions that 
are trying to get into SBA or they've already got their PLP and they just want to grow their SBA uh, por a portfolio and yeah. their department. And they're aggressive. They want to do it. That That's what attracted me to the Internet. You know, back in 2020, back when, you know, we had the COVID situation, they had just got their PLP. They wanted to aggressively grow their portfolio. They wanted to aggressively grow their presence. Oh, they got PLP during COVID? No, they got it before COVID. They acquired another financial oh. institution, but it was during COVID when I started talking to them. And they wanted oh. to go. They were ready to go. They had the capacity. They had the people in place. You need to cover all your bases when you're talking to a financial institution, when you're talking to somebody that you're going to potentially bring your most trusted COI, centers of influences, referral sources to that financial institution to make sure that they can do your deals so that you're not taking off people that have been feeding you for the amount of time that you've been in SBA. So when you're interviewing them and when you're talking to them, when they're in growth mode and they truly want to grow, there's nothing better. It's phenomenal. But you've got to make sure that they've got the right processes and the people important people in place. And I think that's what all of us here on this show have in common. And that is that we've been to enough shops and we know enough people that we know the right people in place. We know the right back room staff in place. Heck, Al and I, and I know Sterling and Chris, we all know some of the best closures in the industry. We know where they are. We've all tried to get them. We've all tried to get the best underwriters in the industry. I think the internet has some of the best out there. It, others will will argue their side, but that's the place you want to be. And that's what attracts really good BDOs. And as a good BDO, that's where you want to be. Shout out to uh, First Colorado, by the way, who was uh, acquired by the Internet. The Internet. Uh, back that's in right. the day. Funny, I, uh, One I actually zero. almost joined First Colorado. I was literally in discussions uh, to come over there and join that team. This is prior to me joining uh, Bay First, obviously. And then all of a sudden they kind dynasty. of went ghost on me for a little while there. And the next thing I know they were getting acquired. So, so you uh, are, you, you know, could say you're the internet adjacent. Uh, you know, I, I almost was one of the OG internet guys, there you, you know, go. Uh, a couple months sooner. And this could have been a whole different podcast, you know, but, uh, it's like Everything uh, happens for Eli reason. Manning was supposed to go to San Diego and he went to the Giants. It, exactly. You know, but well, we got you just goals to show what for. Happened. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Stop Brady in his Talking tracks. About football. Um, to, um, uh, why don't we go to a, a viewer email, Emily? Do we have anything in the mailbag? Um, I don't. I don't know why I did. I just thought that would be. I don't, we don't roll. <laughs> hey, 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 Emily! Can we take a call? Can we take a call right now? Let's go to the callers. The, 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 the phone board is lighting up. Let's go to a caller right now. <laughs> oh Jesus. Hey, can I ask a question to the group? Okay, you get one question to ask. You're interviewing a shop. What's that one question you ask? You only get one. Sterling. What What did your top producer do last year? Mm, or what did the average producer do? Just just kind of getting the feel on what are you guys actually doing over there? You know, because you can't necessarily assume that you're going to come in and be the top dog, even if you might be. Um, you know, you, you just got to assume that you're going to be one in the pack. Uh, so you need to know what you can realistically expect to do when you are in that pack because I, I tell you if if everyone's doing 15 you're not going to come in and do 40 it just doesn't work that way it means that they don't have this the process and the systems in place for you to go in there and be a 40 million dollar producer because somebody would have figured it out already so wow. that's that's the first question that i would ask got it ryan what are you asking i'm asking what their bdo to closer and underwriter ratio is i want to know their capacity got it alan yeah, I, I'll use my answer will be what I actually did, did ask the one question when I came over. Can I have the chief credit officer's cell phone number? Yeah, you did. <laughs> That's wanna, a fact. And I did. And we talked on the phone. We talked on the phone for like an hour and a half. And I'm like, whoa all right this is that's important you know um for me that's it there's not a better way to get your hand on the credit culture than than doing that and if there's a closed door policy to my partners that i'm going to be working with to try to produce a high number of loans that's not my shop anyway right i need to be able to have access to people decision makers you know policy advisors i want to know what that attitude is so is it aligned with my go-to-market strategy right so for me it's all about talking to the chief credit officer. Sales managers will tell you anything, 
right? You know, they're going to make an override. I'm going to put up a number. We're going to be happy. But here's the deal. The chief credit officer is who I'm really in the trenches with when I'm coming up with creative strategies and solutions, you know, to help folks take down business acquisitions. You know, that's a huge point, Al, because if you do not have access to your credit manager, if you do not have access to your closing manager, if you do yeah. not have their cell phone, it, it, right. that's a problem. We're fortunate at the internet, we have a closing manager and we have a sales manager that we could text or call and they're very responsive. They're amazing. And that is critically important because sometimes yeah. you have really crucial uh, questions on deals that are about to close or you just need to understand a, a decision that was made on your deal. So great point, Al. I love it. Yeah. I would probably ask, depending on if it's a bank or non-bank, what their kind of core revenue generator is for the bank kind of what's their plans for sba are they are they growing are they 100 million they want to get to two or 300 million or are they happy with 100 to 150 is it kind of a boutique shop yeah. what do they think of their sba division and where do they see it going in three to five years if they're not growing and they're doing 100 million and they've got let's say 10 BDOs and you're the 11th and you know, you're probably not going to be able to do 40 million and throw off their kind of their plans and projections there unless something changes. So, and if one, if they don't have an answer, run the other way, they can't really give you a definitive. We want to grow. We want to double our production. We want to grow by 30%. Or if we say, we don't know, uh, definitely from leadership, you shouldn't join that shop. If, if if they're not growing, you better get going. That's what that's what I always <laughs> tell folks. In uh, many parts of life. Um, hey, yo, <laughs> hey. <laughs> I was waiting for oh, someone. It, it would have to be Emily, and it was I me. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is, I was going to say, um, I feel like with different shops, personality, like you guys all have vast, vastly different personalities. Like so, but you all work at you guys work together. So when you come into a shop, does maybe your, um, BD, the, the BDOs on staff, do you also kind of look for personalities that you can the kind culture? of to as well? The, I mean, the culture yeah, is the huge. Culture has got to be I, huge. I've turned financial institutions down because of their culture. And there's a couple in the top five that I've legitimately said, I will not take a call from because of their culture. I prefer a culture that, that celebrates winning, right? That, I know the BDOs that are already there. I know the people that are already there that will have a good time. Yeah, we're going to work hard. We're going to bust our butt, but we're going to have a good time doing it. I want a culture there that fits what I'm looking for, the type of person that I am, so that I can grow and thrive and everybody else around me can grow, thrive, and earn. I, I love a good financial institution. That's exactly. When I left my last bank, right, you know, <clears throat> The, the the challenge that I had, the fear that I'd had with the unknown was that I was leaving some of the, you know, my closest friends, right? We're still very close. And obviously it's you guys and some other folks that we, you know, and, and I wanted to make sure that culture, because that's, you're right, right? That's everything. You know, before I, I, I also spoke, I asked to talk with you or Jared. So that was another thing. And uh, Tyler gave me Jared's number because I think he thought he was nicer. But uh, anyway, he was right. I will acknowledge. <laughs> I will. And, yeah. And we're real close now, but it's like, I will acknowledge the cowboy hat you're wearing and the guy who wears a cowboy hat, Jared Johnson. Cause when I talked to him, I was like, Hey, what's it like? What are you, what's your day like? This is the Detroit cowboy hat. Exactly. <laughs> well, his, his response was really simple. He said, I'm trying to work as hard as I can to do as much as I can and just have a great time while we're doing it. And I was like, okay, so culturally we're aligned, you know, and talking to guys that are at shops that are really doing the deal, that's the best thing that you can do, right? Because people that really got it, they'll keep it real with you. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that just talking to BDOs at different shops and just getting a feel for, are you actually happy here? You know, because a BDO will tell yeah. you directly, like, hey, uh, no, this place is terrible, and I'm actually looking to get out of here in the next six months. I've had that happen to me before with, you know, um, some some people who were trying to place me at one point. Uh, it was around that same time when I was looking at potentially going to first Colorado, um, but ended up, you know, I, I uh, ended up staying put where I was because they were getting ready to try and place me with another bank. And, you know, of course, they're selling you the dream as uh, any, any good uh, representative would do. 
And um, you tell me, oh, you're going to come over here. You're going to do all this. It's such a great work environment. Look at the comp plan. Everything's going to be perfect. And I said, oh, that's great. You know, and I, I started looking up uh, BDOs through LinkedIn that work there. And I, and I knew one. And I said, oh, that's perfect. I know. I know this guy. I'm just going to go ahead and give him a call. I already have a cell phone number. I called him and he was like, dude, <laughs> he was like, don't walk, run <laughs> away don't from waste this your guy. Time. That's he was great. like, do not come over here. I'm leaving. Everyone's leaving. This place is terrible. <laughs> and, you know, to this day, I was like, you know, first of all, thank you for that information. Second of all, shame on the person who was trying to place me over there, you know, um, because he knew <laughs> there's no way you don't know because you're probably trying to take people from over there and place them over here. Yep. So you knew you were doing yeah. the, the merry-go-round. It's, it's you knew what you were doing. You just put chairs out yeah. here, yeah. you know, so it's yeah. like you, you knew what you were doing. You just didn't care about me. Right. And so to this yeah. day, I, I really don't like to use those, those headhunter type people. I'd rather just speak to, people individually because I built a network. I put the time in and I put the hard work in to build a network of people that I know I can trust um, that aren't doing it uh, for their own gain, right? So um, that, that's how I operate still to this day. But you should always, always, always talk to BDOs before you join a shop. It's the thing we've been saying since episode one, pick up a phone. Yeah, when I'm uh, thinking about bringing someone on, I'll give one of the team members on our phone, phone number, say, hey, you call Sterling, you call, Jack, call this person and see what they say. Don't involve me. Call them when you have free time. I'll give them a heads up. Like I told you to pass on somebody before because when I talk to him, the guy goes, "Yeah, SBA letting is kind of a lifestyle for me." You know? I, oh, absolutely. I, yeah, I was I was like know, fifty fifty on the guy, and I'm like, "Yeah, Alan, fill him out." Yeah, he's gonna yeah. call you. Then he, he he had a conversation with Alan. Alan's like, "He's not the guy." And I said, "Well, thank you. I <laughs> I was getting a feel for that, but Alan had a he was more open and vulnerable in that moment." And just kind yeah, of express, hey, I like to that golf moment? and. Or are you talking about the other guy? No, the other no, guy. The other guy. The other guy yeah, the other, was, I want to see vulnerable. Yeah, he wanted to golf and surf and do all this stuff <laughs> and not really, you know, do the bare minimum. Oh, just he was a ten to fifteen million numbers. dollar producer. Oh, I, th there's a shop out there for him. Yeah, he, he was just kind of like. <laughs> yeah, he can earn a said, salary no, and get a, benefits. Not a fit. He's good. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was trying to. You guys. And honestly, yeah. I'll be, I'm surprised that a lot of lenders don't actually do that. They're, Alan, I think I connected you with a guy who joined your shop yeah. and, and I said, Hey, did you talk to anyone before you like, do you, who do you know over there? Oh, I don't know anyone. I said, well, Hey, you should, you should talk to this person yeah. and then no, I mean, it's yeah. too late now you already joined, but you should talk yeah. to them. And then I did it for another guy that joined, um, a top five bank, um, as well. Like, Hey, did you, who'd you talk to? Oh, I just talked to the set. What you didn't yeah. talk to. So I connected him with, uh. I'm not going to say their names and I would give it up, but I connected them with that person after the fact. But BDOs out there do not join any shop without talking to a lender who's doing the work. That's that's insane. Right. Mm -hmm. right. What, what yeah. about um, so you guys obviously are not competitive with each other, like super competitive, but you guys are all friends and you kind of feed each other. Like, like let's talk about that as coming from different lenders with different appetites, different structures. How do you, how did you guys kind of like find each other and become like bros, I guess, at the end of the day? There's enough business out there for all of us to eat, all of us to do well, and all of us to just have our own little niche in our own little market, right? We've got our own referral sources. We've got our own ways of doing business. There's enough out there for all of us to eat. And I think once you realize that and once you understand that as a BDO, you will thrive. You and you will have more fun too. So guys like Al Sterling, Hackney, when we go to conferences and we do all the business during the day, we might give each other a little, you know, garbage here and there and joke around. But at the end of the day, we're going out and having dinner and drinks together because we've all been through it. We all know the yeah. deal. We all know the industry and we're all hanging out together and it's a lot of fun. And this industry is amazing. And when you have good friends, whether at, you're at the same institution or different institutions, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we've got our own referral sources. We've got our own ways of making money, our own ways of doing business. And you know, we're not going to overlap at each other. Heck, I've had people call me up, try to shop a deal and say that there was somebody that they've already signed a term sheet on. And I've told them, look, I'm not going to sit here and play the rate game with you. I'm not going to sit here and play the cost game with you. All right. You know what it is. You know what SBA is. If you've already signed a deal with so-and-so and he's my, 
you've already got a deal. Let, let's not play around, okay? So yeah, we're competitors, but when when it, just just like in the NFL, okay, you've got guys that will meet each other on the scrim, line of scrimmage in the gridiron, and they will just pound each other. No diddy, and they will just <laughs> they will just play the game. But when they're walking off the field, they're high fiving each other because they went to college together. Their wives know each other, their kids know each other. They're hanging out and they're having a good time because they know when they're on the field, it's competition. It's nothing personal. We're just getting business done. Allen's line is a uh, attitude of abundance. I share that with our team. Actually, we had, which is which is strange. Uh, a guy named Ray back in the day used to say, hey, I think all you guys like each other um, in our shop. I just said, why wouldn't we? It's attitude of abundance, of course. But uh, yeah. recently, some of our associate lenders were fighting over a referral source because one invited them to lunch and the other had worked with them before and they didn't know it. And I actually called Alan on that. We do this all the time. I'll just call Alan and ask for like random <laughs> quotes and just to drop that. So I actually called him. They were literally not yelling, but fighting in each other's office about this referral source. I said, I'll solve this. So I called out and I said, attitude of what? And he goes, attitude of abundance. And that solved everything <laughs> too. They're like, guys, we're on the same team, first of all. And second, like just play nice in the sandbox here. There's enough volume yeah. to go around too. You don't have to be as desperate for that one deal. The, the attitude of abundance should drive everything. The attitude of abundance, in my opinion, is a mindset that is required to really operate at a high level right? It, it keeps you from desperation and avoiding desperation keeps you from making mistakes. It keeps you from making those reaches. It makes you from trying to push the line that you know you shouldn't. It helps you fully embrace what you can do and what you cannot do. I would say that the attitude of abundance is the one thing that if I ever lost, I'd be at that retirement home you were talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> They've got room for you, Al. They've always got room for you. <laughs> They got my cell phone number too. Trust me. Anyway, hey, I, I get emails every day from them. <laughs> my favorite thing when people argue, I do this all the time and it gets people to laugh, put a pretend cape around the person you're arguing with and be like, oh, look, now you're super mad. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So I, I, I do that do with my kids. Whenever they're arguing, I put one of those extra large t-shirts over them and say, now, now you're in the love t-shirt, you know, your siblings now. Now you guys get to hang out together. Let's see how you like that. You, you can't come out of that t-shirt until you guys learn how to get along together. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's actually kind of cute. That's that old school parenting right there. Yeah. Just yeah. wooden spoon or a big old t-shirt. Well, you can't beat them anymore. <laughs> so you, you got to find other ways to do it, you know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Today is going to we're going to have a surprise guest. Alan is going to do our outro. Do it right now. Say goodbye to everybody and tell them to subscribe and like and where to send an email right now. Thank you guys so much, as always, for tuning in from all of us here at the BDO show. Don't forget to smash that like button. DJ Airhorn effect. Like and subscribe and third party vendors. If you're looking to get in front of BDOs that are doing high volume, reach out to us for sponsorship opportunities. And don't forget to join us at our sister store, SBA Today, which airs every Tuesday at 2 p.m.